Welcome to Speak Out. I'm Sandy Galef, a member of the New York State Assembly, representing parts of Northern Westchester and parts of Cutton County. And today we're going to talk about organ donation and somewhat of a legislative update as to where we're going uh, in the state of New York and uh, what more we need to do. And I have a very special guest with me today, um, and her name is Dr. Amy Friedman. Um, who is the Chief Medical Officer and Executive Vice President of Live On New York. Correct. So we need, welcome so much, uh, Amy. And we, we really need to know what Live On New York is for the people that are watching. Sure. We have the, the privilege of being the Local Organ Procurement Organization, or OPO. We are federally designated and not-for-profit, and our responsibility and privilege is to facilitate organ and tissue donation throughout this donor service area, which includes New York City, Long Island, and several of the upper, uh, of the northern counties, northern to New York City. So we have about 100 hospitals, 12 transplant centers, and serve about 14 million people. Mm -hmm. Overall, there are four OPOs in New York State, so three in the northern part of the state, and there are 58 OPOs in the country. Let's, let's talk about the transplant uh, hospitals. Um, the ones around, well, I don't know whether people go into the city or they're using a Westchester Hospital, a Putnam Hospital, a Dutchess Hospital. Are, what, what are the ones that um, are, are doing most of the transplants? Is it in the city? No, we, we actually have 12 programs that we work with. Um, I can be challenged to name them, but mm -hmm. they would be uh, Westchester, Montefiore. The Westchester Medical, Medical Center? Medical Center has, is a transplant mm -hmm. center. Montefiore is a transplant center. Mount Sinai, Columbia, Cornell, NYU, Downstate, mm -hmm. uh, North Shore and Stony Brook. I think. Is there anybody up that you recall in the Duchess area or Rockland? No, no. there's no. there's a break between Westchester and there are four programs in northern New York New York State, mm -hmm. uh, Buffalo, Rochester, mm -hmm. Syracuse, and I was there for uh, mm -hmm. seven years and Albany. Mm -hmm. And those are all of the transplant programs in New York State. Right. Now you had um, started out as a physician doing. Yes transplants. Right. So I'm trained as a general surgeon and a transplant surgeon and I've spent 25 years clinically working as a transplant center mm -hmm. as a surgeon. Five years ago I had the privilege of coming and joining Live on New York where I oversee the clinical and patient safety of what we do. Um, we had uh, nearly 300 organ donors last year and making that happen and supervising what happens and getting the follow-up is my responsibility. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it is very complicated because you, well, you're, we, we today are trying to educate people and you do this all the time uh, about the need for people to sign up and participate in organ donation and uh, my understanding is uh, I think around the country we have like 120,000 people that are waiting. That's exactly right, 120,000, and we have 10,000 of them in New York. So we have a disproportionately la uh, large focus of people in need of transplants mm -hmm. in New York. And unfortunately, as I think you know, we have the lowest rate of donation in the country, which we're working on so intensively. Mm -hmm. We have the fastest growing registry, uh, state registry for people to to sign up ahead of time to be donors. Maybe we could put up, I, I know we have a chart uh, that shows all of the states uh, in our right. nation and um, where New York is, and I believe it might be printed in red. Um, and we're at the tail end of the 50 states. We are, we are unfortunately the bottom. Again, the fastest growing. But we have had um, significant challenges in getting people to embrace and take the, make the action to sign up to be a donor in advance. And it's important mm -hmm. that they do that. We know that the vast majority of New Yorkers are very much emotionally in support of donation. We need them to make the step right. to sign up and be a donor. Um, and that would be at liveonnewyork.com. 
www.ncpa.org, um, and I know you're going to be putting that up mm -hmm. uh, on your show. Uh, and also, they need to talk to their family and tell them about what their wishes mm -hmm. are. Let, let's backtrack a little bit, too, out of the, being the last state um, in, in people registering. Uh, we also, um, we did a kind of, we have a graph showing the counties right. in New York State, and there's 60, I think it's 63 counties, uh, New York being five altogether. But it, it shows that uh, Putnam County is doing better than Westchester County. Actually, 37% 30, of people in Putnam County are registered. And in Westchester County, it's 27%. So, uh, and Westchester isn't, isn't the lowest. It has Orleans um, upstate, 12%. So, but we have a lot of work to do just in our localities um, to to try to get them up to a level that is going to help people. I mean, that's that's what this is all about. That is exactly right. I hope that people will understand that by signing up to be a donor, only if they have died will they will that actually take place. And each each person has the opportunity to save as many as eight lives through organ donation and to benefit as many as 50 or 60 through tissue donation. When push comes to shove, most people who get into the unfortunate circumstance of needing an organ in order to survive agree to accept that organ. We need mm -hmm. them in advance to consider giving if the unfortunate circumstance comes up. So if a person is in a car accident and dies and they haven't signed up for organ donation, uh, what kind of, is there a process or, or is that just something that, that, you know, unfortunately we're not able to use any of those, um, you know, parts of the body that could help other people? Well, the first thing to understand is that if a person is involved in a car accident, or any, any unexpected event, they're taken care of to the fullest extent possible. Um, they are taken to a hospital where the teams of the hospital don't even know anything about whether or not they've advanced, considered uh, to be an organ donor, and they are just taken care of for their own benefit. Mm -hmm. If it looks like they have become brain dead or they are likely to die, then behind the scenes, the hospital is required by the federal government to notify the associated OPO, that would be us, mm -hmm. and let us know that a patient who meets the level of severity of an illness that would justify our potentially being involved has been admitted to the hospital. We then will find out about what's going on with the patient from the team and would only interact with the family if the patient has died. Right. Now, if the patient hadn't signed a registry, um, is there still an opportunity then to work with the family and see if they are willing? Yes. In fact, there is a, there is a regulatory requirement that every family of a patient who has died without indicating in advance their mm -hmm. intent uh, be offered the opportunity for education about donation and the opportunity, if they are suitable, to become, a, to have their loved one be a donor. Right. But it's so much better just to, for an individual to prepare. Very much, much so. Much easier for everybody. We have to realize that the family that is in the circumstance of having a potential donor because their loved one has undergone some catastrophic event, they are grieving, and it's a very difficult time for them to be asked to make important decisions. How much better for you, if you want to be a donor, to give them that advance notice mm -hmm. that, yes, I've either signed up and now am legally already a donor, mm -hmm. or have told them I would like to be a donor if things move that in that direction. Mm -hmm then they don't have to make the It's, it's a actually like a living will or That's whatever. Correct. It's just an extension of that. Exactly right. 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 Let's go back to um, an individual can save eight lives. Let's let's kind of talk about that a little bit. What what what, are what the does lives? that mean? Yeah, what are the lives? So yes. if we have a young person who has been healthy until whatever catastrophic event suddenly happened, 
then it's likely that most of their organs are suitable. So we could have a heart and two lungs, and each lung might go to a different patient, mm -hmm. a liver, and in cases, there are some cases where we can actually split the liver into mm -hmm. two pieces, one for a pediatric patient and one for an adult patient. Mm -hmm. We have the pancreas and we have two kidneys. So that's a lot of lives that can be saved. Mm -hmm. mm. That is that is uh, that is really wonderful. If if you know an individual that is not alive or not able to live uh, can can do that and have their transplant help somebody else. Yes, it's it's a miracle. It's transferring life, and it gives a legacy to the person whose untimely death has occurred. Mm -hmm. And we also know that the act of donation and remembering a loved one in this way can be a very soothing uh, part of recovery for a family that that has a donor as well. Mm -hmm. Now I'm just thinking about, we, we spoke about a young child. Um, when I'm with people such as at my senior forums and so on, people, and I, and I try to promote organ donation for people of all ages, but some will say to me, uh, and it could be somebody that isn't real healthy, that is middle age, and they'll say, um, well, I just won't do that because there's, no, there's nothing uh, of value, <laughs> so to speak, in my body that might go to somebody else. I said, well, you know, I don't know whether this is the right approach, but why don't you let a doctor make that decision for you? If you say, yes, uh, I, I'm willing to be a donor, let the medical community figure out if there is some value to, to any part of your body. So this is exactly the right approach, and it's the one that we would like all hospitals who refer patients to us to consider as well. Um, I will tell you that I'm the doctor behind the scenes, um, mm -hmm. and I don't follow any age cutoff. Um, we have in New York actually facilitated the donation and gift of a liver from the oldest donor in the country. This was a 93-year-old whose liver was transplanted, worked right away, and the recipient left the hospital in six days. So oh my goodness, right. we don't want people to mm -hmm. select themselves out. Mm -hmm, I will mm -hmm. also tell you that HIV used to be a contraindication to donation. Um, in fact, it was in the initial legislation that established the infrastructure of donation in the country. But three years ago, the HOPE Act was, it's, no, it's five years ago now, the HOPE Act was passed to change that part of the legislation. And we now will consider using HIV positive organs into HIV positive recipients only mm -hmm. um, as a way of expanding the very limited pool of organs mm -hmm. that we have. Right, when you have 10,000 people just waiting, and we, we know That's so right. many of them. Um, I actually had a press conference uh, a little while ago with a number of people from Cortland, the town of Cortland, just in the town of Cortland, that have come to my attention that are waiting, they're on kidney dialysis, uh, they had a, a, a grandchild that was born with some issues and That's having right. somebody in their family donate a part of a liver, a little, you, you talked about a liver being donated potentially in two parts. Correct. And um, I mean, there was, there's just so, I, I know so many people. I, I had a friend that actually uh, flew to Florida very quickly because they had a kidney and then once he got down there that there was a problem. I mean, sometimes there are problems because you, you have some other health issues uh, that come along. But, um, you know, there are just so many of our neighbors. And, right. you know, if they were all outside just kind of ringing a bell and telling people <laughs> that, that they're in desperate need of, of some kind of a transplant in order to live, to continue to live. That's exactly right. The transplantation has become a part of the standard of care. People know that if you develop kidney failure, you can get a kidney transplant. It can mm -hmm. only come from another person, either from a living donor, and if you don't have the good fortune of having somebody volunteer to give you their kidney, then you are dependent on the waiting list. And you're right, mm -hmm. we have many, many people, and disproportionately a large number of them are in our state and in our 
area. Mm -hmm. So the person that might find, I, I, I actually had some friends um, that went to the Westchester Medical Center and had a uh, kidney uh, transplant there and one giving the kidney up to her, her husband. Um, and, and so that was in the family and I guess they first have to figure out if there's a good match. That's um, right. We initially, initially kidney transplants only were between very, very closely related people. Mm -hmm. Then as our ability to prevent rejection improved, we were able oh, to okay. extend, extend that and so a spouse to spouse transplant involves mm -hmm. no genetic relationship, but they're able to within the family make such donations. Today, we can also even use altruistic donations, people who have no connection whatsoever to a recipient and just say, I would like to donate an organ. Now that's not unusual. The first thing we do is send them to a psychiatrist to make sure that every that this is a mm -hmm. appropriate wish um, and they've appropriately thought it through. But that's how good this has become. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So many people. So in New York, um, more and more people. I think we've had a really banner year, haven't we? With trying to sign people up and and so on. We have, um, and we have finally hit. 32% of our potential population has mm -hmm. signed up. We are pretty much that's the up from 26. That's right in New York uh, back in 20. I think we we used the figures 2016. That's right, mm -hmm. and we're really rapidly growing. We have a lot of room to move. Um, the average around the country is at least 50% of people, mm -hmm. and there are some parts where it's as high as 80%. And we know, we know New Yorkers are good people and they want to help other people, so this is their opportunity to mm -hmm. sign up. So let's go back to why that hasn't happened. What, what right. uh, do we have roadblocks? What are the roadblocks so that people wouldn't um, get on the list? I think I, I think I did it online a number of years ago, but you can do it uh, with the Department of Motor Vehicles. Um, right. There's some other avenues. So online or um, at the DMV, you can now through one action sign up and that is now legal consent for donation. And mm -hmm. that only changed in October. So it was much more uh, difficult, uh, logistically challenging to sign up before. We have really improved that and that's a big part of our rapid expansion. Um, we also know that um, satisfaction with care in hospitals in New York is not as good as elsewhere in the country. We know that we have a relatively low death rate, um, which is a great thing. Mm -hmm. We know that people are wearing motorcycle helmets and wearing their seat belts. Mm -hmm. All of this is great for public health, but bad news if you need an organ. Oh, so what okay. we said so we have we're, we're too healthy and we put in too right. many regulations to keep people safe. That's right. So the, <laughs> okay, that's I, a problem. It, that's very interesting. No, it's a happy okay. it's a right. happy, happy issue problem. Of, co of course. <laughs> but so what we really need people to do is commit to donation in advance right. so that if they are one of the smaller number of suitable mm -hmm. potential donors that we can make that happen for them. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and it's so easy to do. So I think everybody needs to really think about their family because their family members may need some donation at some point. That's right. And they should think about their neighbors and just society as a whole. Um, that, that that's that's a part of it. There's no, is there a religious reason? Because I've asked the religious community and I can't find that there is any part of that that plays into this? That's correct. All of the major religions are supportive of mm -hmm. organ donation. Um, there is a general lack of comfort for people uh, in thinking about their own death in advance, mm -hmm. but it is important that we do so if we would like to help others, if we have compassion for others. And, you know, you set up your living will, your... Um, uh, your regular will. Exactly. Regular will. Your, your will, a health care mm -hmm. proxy, and organ donation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and doing so really literally saves lives. Mm -hmm. It's a question of compassion. Right. So over a period of time, I, I have to tell you, uh, the advertising has been 
really so much better as we go along to get people to donate uh, organs. I was on a family trip to California and I turned on television and there was Roxanne Watson from Rockland County Correct. who I have met and she's the focus of this ad, this national ad, uh, because she had gotten an organ donation. I think it was a heart, That's right? right? And um, I mean, it was wonderful. And I guess the more we can do that, uh, and to personalize um, to people that are watching, it gets more people to participate. Well, that's exactly right. If you look at her, she's a real human being right. who's now out there being a productive person. Many celebrities who, for example, Selena Gomez just had a transplant and she didn't get any benefit. She had her best friend mm -hmm. donated a kidney to her and she's out mm -hmm. there singing, being provocative and being, mm -hmm. you know, a life force again. Mm -hmm. That is the beauty of what transplantation can do, but only with organs. Right, right. So legislatively, I know one thing that we did fairly recently in Albany was we had a, a, an 18 year old age uh, for you to be able to sign up and, and we lowered that um, to 16. And has that, I'm sure that came from your organizations too, pushing legislatively yes. uh, to do something different. That's right, the four OPOs in uh, New York State work collectively. We don't compete with each other. We work supportively and collaboratively. Mm -hmm. And there's another organization called the New York Alliance for Donation. And we all work to try and bring to legislators' attentions mm -hmm. things that can be improved. Right now, uh, we have three key fo focuses that we're looking, or foci that we're looking at. The first one is a silly problem, and that is that when we are transporting organs and teams around, and this is particularly a problem in, this, in the city, uh, mm -hmm. they can't use uh, lights and sirens. Like, So you have a, a vehicle that will, that will take an organ and is, is it marked? Is it marked as a ambulance or is it, it marked in any be, way? It may be, but we can't use lights and sirens. So, right, that, right. so that while we can transport blood for transfusion mm -hmm. that way, we can't tra rapidly transport an so organ. So blood is transferred by sirens if and necessary. lights and everything to if get necessary. through. necessary, correct. Wow. And we can't do it for the organ. Right, an organ right. actually, the time that we have to use it in, to get, mm -hmm. get it reperfused or resupplied with blood supply is much tighter than, than mm -hmm. the, the usability window of blood. So that's a key effort that we would like to, to make legislatively. We would mm -hmm. like to be able to transport rapidly Mm -hmm. When appropriate, so, transport organs. You know, I think I'm pretty sure I've seen the bill up in Albany. Um, who, why, why doesn't that happen? I mean, it's. I I can't. <laughs> you there, can't tell me why. No, I do think <laughs> I do think that there is a lobby against it for mm -hmm. some particular reason, but that's not um, something that I'm really able to answer mm -hmm, specifically. Mm -hmm. But it is kind of a no-brainer. Maybe ambulances want to do that themselves. It Somehow, may I don't know. I just it's every piece of legislation in Albany usually has a lot of people for it, right. and a, probably a lot of people against it. Right. You know, and you have to. We try understand. To, we we try do to match understand that. that, but this is really a no-brainer. We've got mm -hmm. to get the organs transplanted, uh, transported, uh, especially with the traffic issues that we have. Mm -hmm. Um, another one is that w another legislative directive that we have is trying to get um, more portals of entry for people into the registry. What I mean by that is we would like to give people additional opportunities to sign up to be donors rather than just through the DMV. Um, we had the New York City uh, identification program and people were given the opportunity through that. Uh, to that sign up. That was for people for identification. It was um, I just uh, just just register in New York City when they as didn't a, have other uh, identification. Le legitimate. Okay, identification. so they signed up through that process. Correct. Right. What about going? Uh, I mean, with with schools, is there a connect for people? Uh, I know some of my friends have gone into schools to talk about it, but now that the laws changed, that more can participate in an earlier age. Right. Uh, so in high school, 
now 16, 17, and 18 year olds can choose to be donors, which mm -hmm, is great. Mm -hmm. Of course, it doesn't apply directly to elementary students, although right. we want them to know and be educated early on about mm -hmm, the beauty mm -hmm. of donation so that they can tell their family about it and well they can go home to their parents and say Correct. are you do you have that little red heart on your driver's license or whatever else? that's exactly yes. right and right. certainly at universities colleges mm -hmm, we would mm -hmm. love it to be a part of um, the educational curriculum no question about it mm -hmm. um, perhaps when uh, licenses of all types are given out by the state I have a medical license perhaps when I'm recertifying mm -hmm, my mm -hmm. license I should be given the opportunity to right. donate or teacher certifications or whatever correct so, so it would be a time when people are doing um, something right. new and and different or renewing that that might be something that we would do have, have you learned from other states about things that they have been doing is that where you get your ideas about what you're going to push here in New York? Absolutely we have an association of OPOs we are mm -hmm. all very collaborative. If we have a question, we'll immediately pick up the phone and speak with our colleagues. The, the, the main difference for us between New York and other states is this low rate of registration and the, bur the challenge of registering that we now have finally overcome in October. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why we're really pushing the registry and hoping people will go on online to, to register. The third legislative directive that we're focusing on is there's something called the Uniform Anatomical Gift Act, which is a template uh, that's a national template for a law about how we handle our bodies, the, the disbursement mm -hmm. of our bodies. Um, New York has not adopted um, and legislated the most recent version of that, that act, the Uniform Anatomical Gift Act. And the difference here would be that if we speak with a family, and let's say there are five relatives mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. about donation, four of them support and one does not favor it, mm -hmm. we've had to opt out of donation uh, and not not sign because that. Because it has to be fully supported by everybody in the That's family? correct. And now we would like New York to adopt this most recent version mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. that it's the majority that is required to mm -hmm, give consent mm -hmm. for donation. Well, people listening to this program can write to their legislators there you go. Um, about these issues to let them That's know right. how they feel about it, which is, which is really important. It's one of the most important issues. And I know the other, just as we're kind of concluding, is that there was a state recently that did allow for some tax credits for people who do um, donate uh, and have to take time off from work or whatever might be something that we look at in our state. Right, especially for lost wages because there is another funding program nationally that's, that New Yorkers are, can uh, access for paying expenses such as child care, parking, transportation, mm -hmm. but to be a living donor people currently have to lose wages and that's something that might be a help to right. replace. So we have a, you've given me some challenges. We have a lot to work on in Albany. We love working and with you. You are a great friend of right. ours. Well, I, you know, this is, this is a very important issue to yeah. all of us. So, um, and I know uh, just as we conclude, probably we'll put up a chart again about where people, how, how can they donate? How can they get on the registry list? Easy, go to our website, Live on New York, L-I-V-E-O-N-N-Y dot org and the link is right there and it will take a few seconds in fact governor cuomo did it in some ads that were that were shown broadly through the state and it took him a few seconds to be registered right that's great well thank you so much thank and you. for your good work thank you very it. much thank you all of you for watching uh, if you have any questions uh, don't hesitate giving me a call at 914 uh, 941-1111 thank you for watching and be sure you get your yourself and your family on the organ donation registry list. Thank you very much. Thank you.